Hello there, this is Fragger here, and I am going to be playing a game for the Shooting Gallery thread on something awful. This is one of my all-time favorite shoot 'em up games titled Use Up and Down to Adjust the Screen Size. I am, in fact, kidding. This game is titled Velocity Ultra. It was developed by Future Lab and published by Curve. It is available for the PC, the PS3, and for the Vita. Now, if we head on over to the options, we're going to be turning down the game volume. This is mainly because of the fact that the mixing is a bit off, and I don't want things to be overpowered via the sound effects versus the music. You can also turn off the left stick. This allows you to just use the D-pad if you're using a controller, so that you don't have to worry about bumping into it. Flight Computer is a whole bunch of extras, including progress, which is trophies and achievements. Hostiles, which is pretty much a beastery. Missions, which is extra things that you can unlock through the main game. Art, which are some of the things you see on loading screens and whatnot. Cobs, which are just briefings, which I'll be pasting in the thread. And stats are, shockingly enough, stats of the game that we are playing. On the right-hand side, there's also two other things here, including a thing that allows us to, once it, for once and for all, prove that 2 plus 2 does, in fact, equal 4. And in the mine section, you get to play Minesweeper, and I'm just gonna fail it, because I don't want to be playing Minesweeper right now. Head on over to the high scores, and it is shockingly the high score listing, but since we don't have any right now, we are going to cancel it. So let's get to the game itself. The game consists of 50 levels and you have three objectives you have to hit each time. Time, rescuing dudes, and a score. So, let's do that. You may recognize that picture from the thing and that's what I was talking about. These little, nice little bits of story that we get to take a look at. So here we go. Here is the first level of velocity. It is, as you can tell here, a top-down shoot 'em up with some interesting mechanics that we'll be getting into across the levels because this game does a really good job of teaching you things. Now this is the directional pad and here's the analog, very different movement wise. So you have to pick up these um, hostages or rescue dudes and then we have our gun to shoot things. Now, this game does a really good job as I was mentioning earlier that it introduces mechanics slowly and allows you to kind of learn them before it starts throwing curveballs at you. Which is a good thing, because the game isn't short, but, you know, it does a decent enough job. You may also notice, for the most part, that these hostages are also a little bit magnetized to our ship, and as long as we get close to them, they kind of go directly to us. The hostages, I mean, sorry, the rescues are also, uh... You know, they're kind of paint the way that you're supposed to be moving through the level so you're able to do things. So there we go, we've beaten the first level. And that's the last time we're going to be seeing this screen here because I'm putting them out from now on. Oh no, we did not get everything. We were a little too slow and we missed two survivors. Hop on over to zone select and it tells you exactly how much we missed things by. Okay then, so <clears throat> what we should do is fix the fact that we didn't do that so we're gonna jump right on in and this is what a winning run is gonna look like all of these from now on are gonna be winning runs in this game because there's no reason to see uh, multiple runs of this game now a few things that I need to point out is that glass that I shoot to break out some of the uh, the pods which I'm gonna call them from now on so I stopped calling them hostages each part of glass is worth a little bit of uh, Points, so you have to make sure that you destroy all of it if you want to get over the requirement for score. Speed tends to not be too too much of an issue throughout this game. I mean, when we start getting to later levels, there's a lot of things that we have to do. It will become an issue. But the rescues aren't that bad in total. They really are. There we go. We have a gold perfect, which you're going to be getting from now on. Now we have a search and rescue mission, which are what that symbol means, you know, if I use words correctly. And now we're going to get to the big gimmick of this game, which is teleporting. So it says here we just have to hold square. Now it works in all directions, so if you just use the D-pad, you will move in those four cardinal directions. If you use the analog stick, you have a bit more freedom in where you want to go, but if you're speeding around, things might happen. Now you see a little alcove over there? That is our first bonus mission, but those disappear after you collect them for the first time. And since I'm only showing you winning runs, odds are I'm going to be collecting it on a non-winning run because that's how things unfortunately go. Oh, 
There we go. I start off a little bit rusty in this game, and trust me, by even the end of this video, you'll be seeing a bit of the skill come back here. Mainly because these levels here, Search and Rescue, you don't have to play them super fast. You'll see here that we actually did pretty good. We did that in 42 seconds. Good times. We got XP, and each time that you gather XP, you unlock more levels. You can see here, they require XP all the way up to level 50. But that is enough looking ahead. Let's do this next mission, which introduces a new type, which is Hostile Forces. This is pretty much a shmup type level, as it would be called. You get special weapons like these, which allow you to spread your shot out in three different ways, so you can wipe out the enemies. And whenever you kill all of them, you get that little extra bit thing, which recharges your special weapon speeder. You can take a couple of hits by ramming into dudes, and there's health refillers, which are super useful. But one thing to point out is that even if you do not have a special weapon, you want to pick up that pickup that you're seeing there for one very specific reason. And that reason is it's actually worth points, so you should always grab it. Also, the health pack does the same thing. If you do not have a need for a health pack, you should still pick it up because it increases our points. Nope, that was two different waves of dudes there. Yeah, that, as you can now tell, these hostile forces only levels require you to kind of just sit still, shoot a lot of dudes, and do this because they tend to have a very high XP requirement and a very low time requirement. So you do have to pretty much kill everything and get all the perfect wave bonuses. Speaking of perfect, there is our golden perfect. Now for my favorite levels of this game. These are the critical urgencies. We'll be seeing this picture, I think, every time. These are ones where you cannot let go of the boost button, for the most part. Uh, there is one level towards the very end of the game where if you stop boosting for even a second, you will actually fail the time requirement. These are very low on XP requirements, very high on the tightness that you have to meet the speed requirements. So you have to really be paying attention to the levels, learn them, move through them quickly, and ultimately beat them. And they also get their own song, too. This is also where using the D-pad for teleportation is very important because you're just be moving left and right a bunch and maybe forward and back so you can swap between the lanes very quickly in that section. Also don't get scrolled because if you do get pushed all the way to the bottom of the screen you will die. Fun times. There we go, we have defeated that level. And those are the three different types. They'll be mixing them together in a bit. But now we have another search and rescue. We have a lot of dudes to collect. Which is gonna toss in the next wrinkle in this game, which are laser fields. Which are here. You have to shoot these numbered little gating things there and whatnot. And you can see there, there was a Bonus level, but we can't get there yet because that requires ability we don't currently have. So yeah, those fields, if you touch them, they instantly kill you, so don't run into them. That's the best advice I can give. <laughs> yeah, long jumps, it'll let you know that in case you are doing a level where you have to be very speedy through it. These opening levels, you don't really need to be too concerned about doing stuff like that, so it's no big deal. Okay, so that is five. We are, what, a tenth done? Something like that? Oh, we have a combination. This is a search and rescue and hostile forces, which means that there's gonna be a lot of dudes and a lot of survivors to collect. So yeah, we're still teleporting around, grabbing pods, doing that stuff. There is a bonus mission over there in the corner that I collected off screen. So yeah.
Yeah, you can do those nice little long teleportations there, so you don't have to worry about, you know, fuck it up, I guess. Uh, 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 there we go. Something you do have to be careful of when you are killing enemies is, well, well one, you want to teleport in the middle of them because you can kill them from the inside out. And two, you want to make sure you're not killing things off-screen, because if you're doing that, then sometimes you will not get the XP for them. There's usually a decent, decent enough XP buffer where you don't have to really worry about that being an issue. Oh, oh, there we go. And there we go. That is it for level 6. Let's hop on over to zone or level. I'll be bouncing between, I guess, those two words most of the time. We have new enemies to fight. These are gonna be a mainstay throughout the game. These are turrets. They are very annoying to fight because they take a fair amount of damage. Stand there, shoot bullets, and you have to kill them so you can get enough XP. So, hooray. They come in different sizes, you may notice, and colors. We're going to be seeing a setup like this a lot through the game. Those diagonal uh, teleportations are a good reason to keep your uh, analog stick active, because they're much easier to do than, you know, trying to do it on the D-pad, as you can imagine. So yeah, this is one where we could, uh, you had to hit the green to unlock the yellow to unlock the yellow field. Oops, probably should have killed those guys before I left. Take care of that. But luckily you can take quite a few hits in this game before you, uh, die. Usually if you run straight into a turret, it will automatically kill you, but you take quite a few hits from them. Hooray! This is going to be the last level before they bring in a new mechanic, so let's just enjoy shooting the rest of these turrets while we still can. Oops. It's being a little too quick there. Ah! By the way, you can teleport yourself into walls, and it is okay. And the XP requirement is fairly high on this one, but there is a lot of enemies to deal with, so I did not have to destroy all of that glass. Well, it's a good thing we got this pickup, because we just ran out of our special weapon. Oh, better back up a bit. I can't remember if I mentioned this, man, my memory's bad, but you definitely can run straight into those enemies and take a few hits, which is nice and dandy. And here we have some new glass, which takes a lot of hits and destroys, and that lovely. Oops.
there we go and that is it for this level now zone 9 is going to be introducing a nice new mechanic which involves the other analog stick which are bombs which is really really fun one of my favorite mechanics in this game aside from one that we'll be learning in probably next video Bombs allow you to throw them in the four cardinal directions. Uh, you can kind of hook them in a diagonal, but you tend to not need to. Uh, you can either use a right analog stick, which is really preferred. It makes the game a lot easier, as you can tell. And uh, you can also hold circle, and if you are moving in that direction, you'll be throwing the bomb in that direction. But in all honesty, the right analog stick does the job just well. You can see here we are now one hit killing all of these turrets, which is really, really useful. It also does a nice bit of splash, so if you don't hit things directly on, you can still kill them. And look how much of that glass it destroyed in a single hit. Nice. Usually if you're flying through glass, hucking bombs is usually not the way to go you want to shoot. Now the nice thing about those little buttons and switches that we have to hit, as it's going to show here, you can throw bombs at them and it only takes one hit, so it takes you a lot less time to hit them. Oh, there we go. Ah! Almost ran into that guy. Oh, got a little close here. And you can just spam them, which is super useful. Okay, that's it for those, and we get to end on a critical urgency. This critical urgency is one that I actually practiced a bit, so you can kind of see when everything kind of comes together in this game. It's pretty damn fast, and it's one of the best parts of this game. As I mentioned, those you don't, you don't have to hit them dead on, but you, can, you have a little bit of leeway. A little off on there, but the magnetism worked out in my favor. And yes, you can also queue up your teleport, so you don't have to wait till the very last second to do it. And that's going to do it for this first video. We will be back, and by we, I mean me and probably more people, because I can't keep talking about this thing by myself. See ya.